Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Cowboy Bebop Update Podcast. Uh, I am your host, GoPro Kyo, and with me today, I have my wonderful co-host, Giant Music. How's it going, buddy? Buddy, it's going really good, and you are sounding more Canadian by the day with your uh, <laughs> the way you're saying that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And uh, yes, welcome to a new episode of the podcast. Uh, to remind the people, who, I do have another podcast that is not anime podcasters. This podcast is still about anime, but it's the podcast where we exclusively update you on the Cowboy Bebop live action that will be coming out eventually. We have more At this information point, we on may the as date. Well just have like a potler, like a, a live action update podcast in general, like for ev- for like whatever's coming out. I feel yeah. like that's what we're. I feel like that's what we're inching towards. Exactly. I agree. I completely agree with that. Um, Don't worry, have... guys. One Punch Man is coming soon. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, three different articles to get through here. Um, yeah. And uh, a lot of really cool news has come out. Uh, the first one we're going to come uh, and talk about here is from uh, Thrillist.com. All of these will be linked in the description, as always. And uh, we the article is titled, Everything We Know About Netflix's Live Action Cowboy Bebop. This uh, article came out in July, uh, on the 6th of July. And uh, the, the things that I gathered here that were really cool um, is that uh, Yoko Kano, uh, this article is confirming that Yoko Kano, the original composer for many of Watanabe's works, such as, well, Cowboy Bebop and uh, Zanku no Terror, uh, my favorite film music composer, uh, a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous uh, composer. So good. She is hyper talented. Anything she she composes is beautiful. Uh is, is on the project, which I'm so happy about uh, because I remember one episode, I was talking about how much I really wanted her to be on there. I, I said, Kyo, she has to be, like, y- if there's one thing you need to secure, it's Yoko Kuno. Like, Watanabe being involved is yeah. great, but Yoko Kuno is even better. You know what I mean? And we got that. Giant we got has it. Been, I'm so Giant happy. has been uh, insistently messaging Netflix, please get Yoko Kuno on this project now. No! Like he's been sending one every single day. I have pictures of this actually happened. <laughs> no, I Stop don't. Stop it. The people are actually going to believe you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, J- Giant has been like really advocating for that. And I'm not going to lie. I completely agree with him because mm-hmm. the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack is so, so fucking iconic that you really can't picture somebody else doing it. I think I did say that at some point, like I, or at, in some point at one of the podcasts that uh they should get some um american jazz musicians to do it but like uh as far as composing goes keep up keep yoko kano but like maybe get some more uh american oriented uh maybe louisiana based bands like just uh some people who are a little more rooted in jazz is uh, mm-hmm. which i don't know that, that just sounds like a uh, cool idea to me just something to make it stand out a little bit i, I see where you're coming from when you're involved because we it is going to be more of an americanized version i think uh, just because of being uh netflix uh, if and you're going that if you're going that direction already i think you may as well give it your its own flavor anyhow exactly exactly i agree i'm just uh, very happy and I, I hope this is not fake news because this this article said it itself and I, I'm uh, when I read this, I, I I did a double take. I was like, "There's no way," but it, it really does say um, uh, the live. Uh, it goes on to say, uh, "Who else is working on it?" To fans of the light, uh, Watanabe, the director of the original anime, is a creative consultant on the live action adaptation, and Yoko Kono, who composed the uh, anime's iconic slaps before slapping was even <laughs> a thing score is returning to That's the true. show as well. So I don't know to what capacity she's going to be involved, but she will be involved. Which is fantastic. Very like this is this makes my day. This makes my day. Honestly, yeah. I'm super happy about this. If you actually look at like so like the the next thing that we've got on our itinerary here is uh, uh, the writers that we've got on this project. So we've got uh, writers from uh, some other Netflix shows, including uh, the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance series. Which oh my god, that is a very good sign in my opinion because uh, if you haven't watched the Dark Crystal series on Netflix, it actually just got nominated for uh for an award in children's programming just uh just the other day which i think it definitely deserves uh which i think is pretty apropos considering i just now learned about this <laughs> there you and go then we've got writers from uh thor uh two of the thor movies mission impossible and venom so we've got a pretty good uh half and half in terms of uh film quality but <laughs> 
but yeah no i completely yeah. agree these, <laughs> these writers were uh, like th this is not brand new news these writers had been uh, um all announced but they all kind of got dropped yeah. along the way this is like just the complete list of it um, yeah so javier remember the last episode we did it on episode six he did this interview and javier just spilled a bunch of information um yeah and that was really we got, amazing we got a lot of our we got a lot of our material in the last episode i think just from this guy yeah alone a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So I'm, I'm very happy, uh, uh, for that, and I think uh, that uh, these uh, writers being attached to very successful pieces of media, uh, brings yeah. hope. And Yoko Kano's coming in. Watanabe is <clears throat> involved. Like these are all pointing to the right, or in the right direction, in my opinion. But on that, uh, let's go to our next article. Uh, from actually uh, before Rant. that, I do oh. want to say, yeah, uh, there is a healthy mix of people who are both in, uh, like the Hollywood. Uh, community and also people from uh, the Japanese uh, entertainment community. So I'm seeing a healthy mix of both people from Hollywood and Japan. So I feel like that's going to add a little bit of a, a level of collaboration and make it feel a little closer to uh, the original series, but it's not going to be it's not going to be too enveloped in the fact that it was a Japanese property to make it or just to just for the sake of the fact that it was Japanese. It feels like there's going to be a nice a nice mix of uh, both like American Hollywood style film filmmaking and then a little bit of that Japanese flavor that we all have come to love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I completely understand that. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, go ahead. Move on. Yeah, to the Screen Rant's article title is uh, what to expect from Netflix's live action Cowboy Bebop show. And uh, so it obviously uh, spoke about the, the times being pushed back and uh, uh Originally, we were supposed to get the series this year. It was supposed to be, like we should be like reviewing episodes right now. Was how it was supposed to happen yeah. but because of the knee <laughs> that's injury. A, that's what we thought, but but not anymore. <laughs> yeah, the knee injury and COVID and everything. Uh, I, I pushed that back, but they do yeah. have um, a release uh, date information. Uh, I don't know if this is a prediction or. Uh, but uh, Kyo, go ahead and, and read the uh, the quote that they left at uh, uh, regarding the release. This is what the, the really new nugget of information that this article provides. While everyone has been tight-lipped about exactly when the release date will be, most likely because they're still not sure when the first, re first season will be completed and ready for release after the delays, everyone is confident that the fans will be able to experience the Cowboy Bebop adaptation sometime in the year 2021, along with many other films that have been delayed due to the coronavirus outbreak. Yes. So, I mean, 2021 seems like a very reasonable um, guess that gives us at least another, what, at least 15 to 16 months uh, before we uh, we see this uh, come out. Uh, I'm very, I'm very excited that uh, this, uh, this virus was not, it did not just stop it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's loaded down and people are still fighting and pushing back and uh, working on these projects. It, it, we had to adapt, uh, you know, it was not just a yeah. live action adaptation. It was a, uh, everyone's lifestyle adaptation here, uh, you mm -hmm. know? And I, I'm just uh, I'm just happy that uh, we can expect something in 2021. There's a lot of great movies that are going to be coming out in 2021, and uh, I'm very excited for for this specific release. Obviously, that's why we're doing podcasts about it. But what are yes. your thoughts on that? Uh, with uh, it being a delay for another uh, year at least. Um, I mean, I'm I'm obviously disappointed. I was really hoping to get to uh, see what they've come up with uh, in the next or like this coming year, but. Uh, if it's going to be in 2021, I can probably wait, you know, like I was expecting or like some people have been expecting this adaptation since like the early 2000s, back when like there were rumors of Keanu Reeves being uh, pl uh, played by Spike. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but I mean, obviously, we're all disappointed that it's been delayed. But either way, I think as long as it comes out, the fact that it's been delayed shows that there's like a, a clear uh, care for the people working on the project and not so much uh like whether or not if they actually turn a profit a hundred percent um i think that like this point literally <clears throat> jumps perfectly into the next article um from full circle cinema.com uh titled netflix's live action cowboy bebop series casting gren uh, before we talk about this new uh, character that's uh, going to be casted, who has yet to be casted, uh, should I say, um, yeah. they did have a quote about uh, the production being resumed. Um, so, uh, Kyo, if you want to go ahead and, and talk to us about uh, a little bit of, of what's happening uh, there. Recently, it was confirmed that Netflix's live-action Cowboy Bebop series was cleared to resume production, and a new character breakdown has revealed that they are 
casting a fan favorite character, according to insider Daniel Richmond. The series is casting for the character Gren. Now, uh, for those who don't remember, uh, Gren was uh, the androgynous uh, bartender character that I believe uh, they were the one that got killed in that uh, car crash, like towards the end of the episode. I don't remember exactly. It's been a while since I watched the show, but I, I do rem- I do remember after like looking this character up. From uh, I I was uh, I was curious when I, I typed in uh, Diane Richmond and this person has a, a Patreon um, and their Patreon says uh, that the they create new scoops and stories and they have a, uh, a a post that's locked and only for patrons titled Cowboy Bebop. Um, so I'm guessing this person ha- is like an insider and had like ex- uh, exclusive uh, information. So I mean. I think that like production being resumed at this point, you know, at least in some parts of the world, such as Canada, where I'm from, uh, mm-hmm. lockdown is not is slowly uh, not being as strongly held. Uh, there, we still have restrictions, but we can like go outside more and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And the the article at the end, uh, before we get more into into Gren, um, it did say that the production was set to resume in September and that they're filming mm-hmm. from September. So they're currently in production right now, if this is correct. Uh, all yeah. the way until January, giving it at least a five month uh, film cycle, which I think for a 12 episode miniseries is, you know, uh, a, a fair amount considering that they uh, had started filming prior to that. Uh, any thoughts on that, Keo? Uh, were they, weren't they saying, I think we discussed in one of the uh, previous episodes that they were talking about doing uh, like. I think they said that they were doing like 40 minute episodes uh, per episode. I think so, something like that. I, I do remember yeah, being, so that, I, I don't think it's going to be a 26 yeah. minute episode for sure. Yeah. So uh, that tells me that like they're going for like say Mandalorian style uh, storytelling. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have like 40 yeah. minute episodes and exactly. uh, that, that means that it's going to probably take them a little while into the year before we actually see anything about like uh, the release, because like if they're, they're 45 minute episodes, like, It's one thing if you're doing a movie, like if you're doing a two hour movie, you've got probably like six, maybe eight hours of footage. But if you've got like, uh, but if you're doing a show, you've probably got double that. So you've probably got like 12, maybe 14 hours of footage. So it's going to be so like they've got to go through all the shots. They've got to make sure that they hit all their uh, timetables correctly. So it's probably going to be a little while before we see like or before we hear anything about uh yeah yeah the trailer's probably a little ways off but um if they have enough footage i'm hoping that uh maybe we'll get like a teaser at least a teaser would be nice this coming uh in the next coming months because we've been waiting for this for quite a while and i think most people may have almost forgotten about it if they weren't watching our podcast already yeah, no, completely fair. But the thing is, now that I'm thinking about it, it makes sense that we're going to be going, uh, getting a, a release date or just the series in general in 2021. If the filming goes until January, that's yeah. early, early 2021. Yeah. And that gives a lot of time for editing, music, yeah, post-production. Once they hit, once they hit po- post-production, then I'll be relaxed and I'll just be like, okay, now it's just a matter of time. So it de- post-production is like the shortest or like where they have the most time to just do whatever that's like the equivalence of like being able to go into an office for like eight hours for like three months or something like that and they can get a whole lot done just by just by doing that because like the difference is that if you're in production you kind of have to both be aware of other people who have the lot that you're working with uh like trying to get enough shots before uh the position of the sun changes which i can promise you from having done from having done live action uh productions before getting the sun to work with you is the most ridiculous thing in the world (laughs) oh man (laughs) when you're working when you're working on a live action movie especially if you're not doing it on a sound stage then it takes forever to get done yeah um let's go and talk about uh grand more the those true quotes that this article stated about uh grand uh if you would like to read them uh keel go ahead uh more on grand Introduced during the Jupiter Jazz arc, Grenacia was a soldier during the Titan War. Gren be- was betrayed by the series' main villain, Vicious, and was sent to prison, where he was subject where he was subjected to powerful drugs, which resulted in unforeseen consequences. While a one-off character in the series, Gren has quite the fan base and has, be- and has become 
a favorite among many. According to a new casting call, Gren's character is described as non-binary, genderqueer, intersex, transmasculine, and or third gender in their 30s. They are a bartender at Anna's nightclub and Anna's right-hand person as capable with a saxophone as a Glock, and as confident in a dress as a suit. Gren is a Bowie-esque embodiment of 22nd century handsome beauty. Netflix is looking to cast people who identify as non-binary, genderqueer, intersex, transmasculine, or and are and or third gender in the recurring role. I think that's a great step. Let's just take a second here. This is a great step uh, for these people who yeah. have had not the same opportunities. And I'm just really happy that Netflix is being exclu- in not exclusive, sorry, inclusive. Uh, inclusive. Inclusive in, in this way. It's a beautiful thing to see. And I think that a character like Gren is a opening gateway. And I, I unfortunately, I think it's a, from what I recall, this character was a one-off. There was maybe, I remember this character happening maybe right in the middle of the, of the, of Cowboy Bebop, about the anime. So yeah. I think it's going to, we're going to see this character around episode six or seven. And then it's going to be the episode with that character. And then we're going to move on to the next thing. But at least... We're getting our foot yeah. in the door here, and we're getting we're heading in the right direction, and I'm really happy. This this puts a, a big smile on my face. I'm very content with this. I think it's it's also pretty good timing considering like there was there was that whole controversy not that long ago with the uh, the cuties TV show that they made. Like there was some there there was some like nasty stuff going on there, but like um I think uh, I think Netflix is making a step in the right direction with uh, like casting with for uh, somebody who's not a or this is not a very common role that you see come up in Hollywood. So like, I think being allowed to do this on a, on basically a streaming service where it's completely, it's completely like new territory. Like it's, I mean, it's not as new as it was like a few years ago, but still like we're allowed to do a whole lot more on streaming because there's the, uh, there's less focus on what investors want. And it's more so focused on it. most Netflix shows I've seen are very much creator driven. And I think that's a very good opportunity to get more people of differing backgrounds and differing uh just just people who don't get a whole lot of representation in media it's good to kind of give that opportunity and for it to actually be out there a hundred percent a hundred percent very well said let's uh talk about uh what's happening over on the uh, cowboy bebop imdb uh the mini the mini series uh so we always go through it just to make sure if there, just to see if there's like any new uh, information out there. And from what I've gathered, I think we've uh, we've got uh, two new actors. I don't know if we mentioned these before, but uh, I don't remember uh, talking about them last time. Uh, for a character called Salt S A L T Z, I don't know who this person is. Uh, Arlo Green, and I don't know who this character is either. I don't remember uh, Salt ever being a character for one episode. Uh, yeah. Arlo Green is an actor known for Cowboy Bebop, Shortland Street. And Ru- Ru- Gang- Ru- Rangi? I mean, I guess I, don't I mean, I guess he's known now because now we know who he is. But <laughs> yeah, I've <laughs> but never I seen this no... person before. Yeah, yeah no this, idea. this character doesn't appear when you look him up on Google. So I'm assuming yeah. this is probably one of the characters they made exclusively for the Netflix series. That's what I think is going to happen, too. And then the other character uh, is just a thief. Uh, I'm going to Google Cowboy Bebop thief, but I don't think there's like my... I, I don't remember like a thief being a, a thing. Uh, Abdul Hakim. Uh, I'm is, sure it's in there somewhere. But there's already a character uh, that was uh, uh, casted for Hakim. Uh, K- uh, Kali Nell uh, is another uh, actor that was cast. Uh, this dude is jacked. This dude is like ripped. It's crazy. Uh, he must work out a lot. And uh, I'm not. He, uh, he's better known. No, he, so the, <laughs> this guy's better known as a uh, a stunt. A uh, stunt guy, so I'm assuming like if he's playing a thief, he's probably gonna be doing some parkour shit. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping he gets to stretch himself during that. He's just gonna run after people yeah. and like yeah. jump over them. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm looking I'm looking for a better bet, better tape. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anybody seen Ein? <laughs> Oh, I, uh, ruff, ruff, what? what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> please include this. Please include that audio in the in the next uh, episode of uh, Cowboy Bebop, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then um, we'll see when I looked at like the main cast, um, we have upgraded. We have like this. This is uh, this is the ultimate indicator, in my opinion, that we're in a full production because. Uh, the series producers is uh, beefed up. Uh, the amount yeah. of uh, series uh, cinematography is uh, there's 
there's two people in there now. Series casting, series production design, series art direction, all of these uh, uh, different uh, intersections uh, of uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for here? All the, these different sections of people uh, who are a part of the production of Cowboy Bebop uh, are all uh, mentioned here. Series set decoration, series costume design, series makeup mm. department, series production management, series second unit director and ass or assistant director. Series art department has like at least 30 people in there. Series special effects, uh, series visual effects by, uh, series stunts. They mm -hmm. have like, I think 12 stunt people, series camera, and electrical department, series casting department, series costume and wardrobe department. The, the okay. wardrobe department literally has the most people. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and then uh, we have an uh, editorial department I mean, and hey, location if they, management. If, <laughs> if they, if they happen up? to like, uh, if they happen to like uh, the Cowboy Bebop fashion, I see no, uh, I see no problem with having as many people on on board with that as possible. So yeah, a lot of those people are just for one episode though. The series crew, other crew, oh, uh, yeah, just a lot, a lot of people uh, have been uh, listed here. Uh, it's crazy, and I think that this 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 proves that we're we're in full production here. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, anything else you wanted to say on that, or should we jump to questions? Uh, let's go ahead and jump to questions because I I've got nothing to I've got nothing to add on to it. All right, so first question is from Anna Quaid, and the question is, what is your favorite Cowboy Bebop soundtrack? Yo, I already uh, know mine. Kyo. Just the just the intro. That's all. That's Come all. Come on. Need. <laughs> Are you really uh, gonna I'm... tank me like that? <laughs> uh. I'm pretty uh, partial to uh, Cats on Mars. <laughs> I really like Green Bird, bro. Green oh, Bird. Yeah. That's a good oh, one. Oh, you know what? The the uh, I think if I had to pick one favorite, I would probably say Real Folk Blues, like the uh, the ending uh, music that plays out the, the episodes. See you later, Space Cowboys. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say, though, is um, I was going to say something. Um, I forget what I was going to. Oh, damn. Why, why am I? Why am I God damn it, Diane. Yeah, seriously. Uh, I was gonna be something about the music. Uh, this is my one time, to, my one chance to talk about the the music in Cowboy. Yes. Uh, do you in the middle of the pandemic, when we're really like fully in lockdown around like April or May, uh, there was a video that came out and it was like the soundtrack to Cowboy Bebop, all reworked by a bunch of musicians uh, on mm -hmm. like different cameras. Do you think they're gonna include that in the series? What the uh, the music that they did? Yeah, that specific soundtrack they recorded. It had the voice actors and everything. I don't know. I didn't get a chance to uh, see it or hear. It. Dude, you sent it to me. I didn't listen to it. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it and I was like, oh, Diana like this. <laughs> <laughs> you had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I, I, I don't Durge. know. I suppose I hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Durge. I don't know how to say your last name, bro. Uh, which character do you not want to see in the live action and why? I don't want to see Keo because he doesn't like proofread anything. He just kind of like sends you <laughs> stuff. That's okay, Jayan. I didn't get in. <laughs> I uh, went to the auditions. Seriousness... They said you're too fat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know what character uh, I would not want to see. Do you, do you have a, a character you don't want to see? Not, uh, not me. Not really. I mean, like I I think everybody would pro or like I think there's a good number of people who don't want to see Ed. But I'm actually really hoping that somebody is casted as ed oh ed is for sure i remember saying it. it's gonna go uh ed ed's gonna be in there for sure 100 percent. yeah ho hopefully she is i just had like we heard like the one uh the one piece of uh, news on ed and we haven't heard anything since so i don't know it could have been like pure speculation we don't know yet i don't want to see bob Who's, who the fuck is bob Jayan? <laughs> straight from the wiki bob is a police officer for the issp in the grand Ye Granny Mead Police Department. At one time in the past, he worked in the same department as Jet Black once had. Yo, these people can't write speak in English on oh, this wiki, bro. But yeah, no. Apparently, it, it, there's a character called Bob. I just thought it'd be funny to say Bob. So yeah, I don't want to say right. Bob. <laughs> Final question. Um, Alera Sfera. I don't know oh, these people's last names, bro. Uh, do you think that the pandemic will once again slow questions. down <laughs> or even halt the production of the series? possible very possible if there's another lockdown dude we're screwed yeah like i mean like if i don't know like it it, it looks like we're making progress america is making the least progress but like i'm hearing that there are some good things going on with like actually getting a vaccine out the, the only problem for me is like making sure everybody gets the vaccine because of course america 
is also the same people who are like vaccines are bad for you but if you show but i saw an amazing uh i saw an actually amazing post where somebody posted the uh, uh the chemical compounds of an apple and didn't tell anybody what it was and then somebody was like but like they said that it was uh, the contents of a vaccine. And then they said, uh, I have actually shown you the chemical composition of an apple. This shows that you guys are not qualified to be to be afraid of this. <laughs> Fair enough. But what I, what I will say, though, is I feel like if there's like a second wave or a third wave or whatever, um, I think the cast and everyone is better prepared to handle it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the, the concerning thing, though, is that uh viruses are always changing so we can never really be completely sure about it no no of course but like they are they started they, they worked from home uh like with the new script and everything oh yeah they, ma- they have a system that's pre-established prior to like before the va- virus ever hit you see what i mean so i think yeah there's better preparation on their end so at least there's that going for us that maybe it will get slowed down there, but i don't think it'll be halted yeah you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a smart, there is a, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of companies that are being smarter about it, while there are some that are not, but I'm just trying, or I am going to have to agree with you, there are people who are taking precautions and are being very smart about this whole thing, so it, honestly, I see see that it could go either way at this point. I have no, I, I don't think I have the wherewithal to say exactly where it's going to go, but I really hope that nothing really bad like sets sets it back puts everybody out of work and more people get sick like obviously that's not what i want but no of course who who knows what could possibly happen 100 percent. all right uh is there i think this basically concludes uh everything we had to say so uh the update was all about the the imdb news uh the grand grand being cast uh uh, in the process of being cast, the resume production mm-hmm. with the pushback times and everything, Yoko Kano uh, being confirmed, and uh, we answered your questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, Kyo, where can they find you if they want artwork? I, I, if I want to draw something, where do I go? You can go to my website, or you can contact me through my DMs on Twitter. Have that on my phone, so I'll li- <laughs> I literally have all the time in the world right now. So yeah, you guys can find me at GoPro Kyo on Twitter and on my website, uh, goprokyoarts.com slash wick. That's it. That's all I got for you. <laughs> cool, cool. And uh, for myself, I am at Jiam Music. Jiammusic.com is my website. You can uh, go check out all the episodes we do uh, of this uh, update. And also, if you like just anime podcasting in general, I have a uh, podcast called Anime Podcasters, uh, which is the main podcast of this YouTube channel. You can go check that out and uh, just uh, subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And also, uh, my electroacoustic music project, Chip Machine, is putting out an album called The Sound Painter. So go check out The Sound Painter. We already put out one song. And uh, Kyo, uh, when you were listening to Essay the Nation, could you, could you just describe what you described to me when you were listening to it? It, I, it I honestly love... sounds like a fighting game track up until the ending. The ending sounds like it should be like, God, I don't know what I would describe it as. I would probably uh, ascribe it to being the closest thing to an anime ending soundtrack at the second half. Well, but what I love the most of what you said was, uh, I feel like there's like lasers going through my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. The... <laughs> What or like, I don't know what sounds you use, but you made or like did you like set it so that it goes from like left to right in the like the headphones? Uh, I think I the, might have. I did right a bunch channel, of weird sorry. stuff. It yeah. was me and my friend uh, Akachi um, that uh, I'm doing the album with. We did a bunch of weird stuff, uh, like a lot of uh, acid, uh, acid uh, uh, synths and eight bit and chiptune synths, and we just like bit crushed that i i don't want to go through that too much down the rabbit hole but right a lot of weird stuff going on in there <laughs> definitely something cool i would check out if you guys are looking to list listen to some good uh crap what's the word listen to some good music <laughs> all right yeah what's that thing again oh yeah you'll go know yeah if you want to listen to <laughs> all right so for myself <laughs> gopro keo this has been another episode of the cowboy bebop update podcast and we will see you guys whenever there's news bye bye